Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. Uh, let's see, Brian Quick says, uh, he said, since DC versus Heller, there hasn't been a win for the Pro 2A advocacy groups. Just defending against further restrictions on our privileges, yes, privileges, they haven't been rights for decades. That's from Brian Quick. You guys want to respond to that? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Seems that way. Yeah. Seems that way. Um, yeah, I'd say, you know, like all advocacy, it hasn't been for lack of trying. Um, you know, yeah. The, yeah. The, the Supreme Court did not it, serve a handful of cases recently. And, yeah. Yeah. What was know, it? 10 we cases? We push. We push. And, mm-hmm. and you know, I, then. then left waiting yeah there has been a good movement on that state um and that's really where the battleground is now um, things move a lot quicker at the state level and like, like honestly the gridlock is there's pros and cons to that it's a double-edged sword at the federal level right it's mm-hmm. very hard for us to push pro-gun legislation obviously we we saw that firsthand with the hearing protection act mm-hmm. um but it's also very hard for our opposition to push through anti-bills um so mm-hmm. you know if uh, if you know, say Trump loses the election in in November and the Senate flips, it will still be very difficult for anti-gunners to push through negative legislation. Yeah. Um, so, you know, there's some sort of solace in that, but nonetheless, like we feel you, man. Like we really need a landmark win. It has been too long. Yeah. Frankly, the biggest landmark win in our lifetime has probably been you know in 2004 when the AR ban sunset. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, which is is sad. You yeah, know? yeah. There's not. Yeah, there's a few victories there. You brought up the Hearing and Protection Act. Maybe we should take this opportunity to jump all the way into that little <laughs> rabbit hole. <laughs> sure, sure. So that way we can blame Knox. <laughs> it was my yeah. idea. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, yeah. really? Was the Hearing Protection Act your idea, literally? Literally. Okay, yeah, no. Tell, explain that to us. All right, so, you know, obviously our, our end goal as an organization is trying to remove suppressors from the National Firearms Act. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, in 2015, uh, we worked with Representative Matt Salmon. Um, it was us, our attorney at the time, um, and the NRA with Representative Salmon's um, staff. Uh, we spent about six months drafting the initial draft of the Hearing Protection Act. Um, That got introduced by him in October of 2015. Um, And at the time, you know, we figured, hey, it's going to be a while before Republicans take the White House, before they have both chambers in Congress. This is really an educational messaging bill uh, that we're going to spend the next, you know, four to six to eight or however long it takes years um, educating members and normalizing suppressors. Um, Fast forward a little over a year after we introduced it. Trump wins the White House and is sworn in 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 January of 2017. And, you know, we're just sitting there like, you know, this is the the opportunity came faster than we ever thought. Mm -hmm. Uh, But we're not going to stop. We're going to push as hard as we possibly can. Mm -hmm. Um, We did. You know, we we got it reintroduced. Uh, Representative retired. Uh, Representative Jeff Duncan, who uh, was the Republican co-chair for the Congressional Sportsman's Caucus, which is the largest bipartisan caucus on the Hill. Mm-hmm. Um, they have, you know, several hundred members comprised of from both sides of the aisle in both chambers in the House and the Senate. Um, he introduced that bill uh, in the House. Senator Crapo introduced it in the Senate. Um, and we we blitzed, man. We I was in D.C. almost, if not every week, every other week, um, meeting with members, um, signing up co-sponsors. We had, I think at our peak, somewhere around 150, 160 co-sponsors. So those are locked in votes. We don't even have to do a whip count on those guys. Mm-hmm. Um, and we ended up getting it amended into the Sportsman's Act um, or the Share Act, which was the big sportsman's omnibus package um, that had a whole lot of firearms provisions and pro hunting, pro outdoor provisions um, that was spearheaded by the Congressional Sportsman's Caucus. Um, we got it thrown into that. Um, and I don't know if y'all remember, I was actually in getting into my Uber on the way to the first committee hearing on uh, the Federal Land Subcommittee in D.C. for that bill in June of, uh, what was that, 2017 or 2018? 
the years are kind of running together at this mm-hmm. point. Yeah. That June, uh, when we heard the news about the congressional baseball shooting. Yeah. Um, and our member, Representative Duncan, our lead sponsor for that bill, um, the shooter actually asked him and our friend who was his uh, assistant who was driving him to the baseball practice, like, hey, is this practice for Republicans or Democrats? Um, he said, it's the Republican practice, not thinking anything of it. Mm-hmm. Dude walks in, 30 seconds later, starts opening fire. Um, so obviously that delayed that hearing. Mm-hmm. Uh, it got funded until September. Um, we get back in September. They actually hold the hearing on a Tuesday. We're, we're there. Unfortunately, they, you know, we didn't make the cut to testify, although we, we tried pretty hard. And I will guarantee you that if that bill comes up for consideration again, I will be on the panel for that. Um, but we... Uh, got it passed out of the subcommittee two days later on that thursday it passed out of the full committee which means they sent it to the house floor and uh in talks with uh the speaker's office speaker ryan at the time um you know we were being told tuesday to thursday of the following week we're gonna have a full house floor vote um so we were using that time to try and whip the votes shore up any sort of squishy republicans and see if we could get some more democrats to come on because it was a bipartisan bill we had a few democrats that had signed on um, and, uh, so we were, we were doing our work, keeping our heads down. I went back for the weekend, was planning on coming back up on that Monday. And, uh, that Sunday in between when it passed out of the committee and when it was scheduled sometime that next week, that Sunday in between was the shooting in Las Vegas. Yep. Mm-hmm. And, you know, as soon as it happened, you know, for us, it's like, okay, well, we're at least going to delay that vote. Um, there's just no political way in which that's going to occur, you know, this week. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it's out that tweet. Imagine how much worse it would have been with the silencer. Mm-hmm. And we're just they're like, I mean, you know, that's that's kind of the educational gap where people hear that and they 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 buy the bullshit hook, line and sinker. Right. Um, we all know that it would make no difference if that dude had had a suppressor. Honestly, it probably would have jammed his guns. Mm-hmm. Right. Like maybe people would have survived. But at the distance that the people that were being shot at that work, um, you know, the, we're not going to really know much of anything about that whole situation. Yeah. And that's yeah. all yeah. like, we don't know if that guy <laughs> truly had bump stocks. We don't know yeah. anything that happened there. We won't see yeah, the, never the real footage. We won't see anything, um, yeah. out of that, you know, we, even like the FBI closed the case on that thing. Yeah. So, um, with, yeah. For the public. Huh? Yeah, with uh, with no communication to the public yeah. whatsoever. Yeah, yeah, you know, and in a place like Vegas where there's a lot of cameras, I mean, we could. That's a whole other rabbit hole to go down. So this is yeah. really interesting. I didn't know that Knox, you were like on the inside, right? Most of us were on the outside of this situation. Um, you know, Richard, you could bring up your memory. I'm just gonna give mine really quick, right? So I remember hearing about the Hearing Protection Act. Cause, okay, first of all, let's go back a little bit. I remember the suppressors since I got into this thing. I got into this to, to doing what I'm doing now like seven years ago. And I think suppressors are becoming more and more popular, right? Yeah. And I think a lot of companies are getting on board with making suppressors. Guys, the companies are looking at integral suppressors and on all levels, calibers, things like that. You know, people were doing this ink canal technology, all kinds of stuff was happening. And... Um, you know, it, to me, I thought it was a good thing. There was a good thing going. Everyone was buying them. <laughs> Lots of good stuff going on. The Herring Protection Act came around. Everyone started talking about that. And people, something crazy kind of happened, right? That people, it seems like to me, went from buying suppressors to like, oh, no, uh, you know, because you, you have to buy it. Then you, you obviously you pay for it. You know, they're I'm going to say they're kind of, a, you know, you could put it in the expensive category. Then you have to uh, pay for your tax stamp, fill out forms, wait about six months. I think suppressors were so popular at that time. Some people were waiting like a year. You know, there was, there was all kinds of things going on. And all of a sudden, it's like it fell off a cliff because everyone yeah. was like, guess what? Suppressors are going to be free or really cheap. You don't have to do anything. Yeah. You know, I'm just going to wait because, uh, yeah, Trump's going to get in there and we'll all have, everyone will have suppressors. I don't have to buy anything right now. Does that seem accurate to you guys or you, do you all see that from a different point of view? Um, I, I can kind of speak to that. You know, we were talking a little bit about some of the form four applications and the numbers coming in. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And so I think, you know, there's, there's kind of two sides to that story or two, two kind of things to look at. Um, mm-hmm. So I've been tracking Form 4 applications. Um, ATF has the data going all the way back to, I think, 93 mm-hmm. um, Form 4 applications. But if you look at maybe, say, the last 10 years, so in 2011, there were 33,000, just shy of 34,000 applications, Form 4 applications. And that number... Um, has increased about 40% per year on average. Mm -hmm. Um, What you see is that blip there again in 2016, like we talked about, um, those 276,000 applications that came into ATF after they announced the implementation of 41F. And then once it was implemented, so this was, you know, um, I guess to marry up the timeline. So, um, the Hearing Protection Act was introduced in October of 15. That year, there were 130,000 applications. So the okay. year after it was introduced, 2016, that first half of the year, still 276,000 applications coming in. So definitely not a decrease in sale, but a, a huge increase in mm-hmm. sales, even while the Hearing Protection Act is there. Now, again, this is pre-Trump being elected, too. Mm-hmm. Um so Obama's still in the White House. Mm-hmm. Um, from the time that the ATF 41F gets implemented, then then it drops off a cliff. I mean, it, it precipitously, yeah. you know, 90% of the applications came in in that first half of the year, only 10% in the second half. Mm-hmm. But then 2017, so this is after Trump's elected, he's inaugurated into office, the Hearing Protections Act is still, you know, happening. It's been introduced again. Um, there were 110,000 applications. So again, about a 15% decrease over 2015, kind of your last normal year. Mm-hmm. Um, so not the huge drop off that, that I think was perceived, but what did happen there also was uh, post 41F, uh, manufacturers were still continuing to produce. So ATF also um includes some of the manufacturing data in their report um, and we we submit FOIA requests pretty much every year to ask ATF you know how many suppressors are there in the registry how many have been made each year uh, they don't know <laughs> they, well they, they kind of know they can look at the form 2 data the funny mm-hmm. thing is they, they 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 can't tell they can't tell historically they can't go back in time and say hey on this date this is how many were in their registry they can only tell us on this date, when we looked, this is how many there were, but we can't go back in time. Mm-hmm. Um, but the the interesting thing, so in 2016, again, they, they received a total of 312,000 Form 4s the mm-hmm. whole year, 2016. but they showed an increase in the registry of about 452,000. So essentially they, they had 150,000 more suppressors made mm-hmm. than Form 4s received, which is a pretty good barometer of sales, how many mm-hmm. suppressors. Um, and that 150,000 is really about a year's supply. And so what we saw was that the distribution channel in terms of distributors and dealers were chucked full of suppressors mm-hmm. and people were still buying them, but a lot of manufacturers and distributors weren't getting reorders because they were just kind of still flushing that channel of suppressors. Yeah. Um, there were a lot of things. Then, I'm, I'm trying to remember. Uh, th- there's like, so you had Integral, Integrally Suppressed Pistol came out from Silencer Co. There was a bunch yep. of things going out there. I have one of those, right? Um, yeah, yeah, those are. Cool. Yeah, I mean, I was, I was really excited about that. There were a lot of things going. You know what? It just feels to me like um, prior to the election, lots of people were getting behind Trump getting behind Republicans, you know, everyone was excited. We're like, wow, you know, this could be the thing. Everyone does that push. Trump uh, gets in there, right? Republicans have uh, the House, uh, Senate, they have everything, super majority, and then nothing happens. So, yes, of course, yeah. you know, there's there's other things going on. Mm-hmm. There's, there's shootings, news is affecting this or whatever, but it seems to me like uh, a lot of the politicians that we were talking to when we were like, you know, uh, take – take suppressors off the NFA, you know, where's the uh, universal CCW, right? Like a national CCW for everyone was all this stuff. They kept saying, oh, don't worry about it. Just wait till the midterms. 
I remember yeah. getting that. I remember getting that language from a lot of these guys. Oh, wait till the midterms. The weird thing is everything really flipped by the the midterms. But somewhere in there, the thing I really, I just really remember this going into stores. Like suppressors were really popular. Everyone was trying to get on board with that. Um, <laughs> you know. Uh, then all of a sudden, everyone I'm talking to is like, these things are going to be real cheap because because they're coming off the NFA, you know, which I don't really I remember having conversations with got with uh, companies about that. Like, really, are they going to become super cheap all of a sudden when all of this happens? Uh, nope. I don't think yeah. that the technology it takes to make it. People are like, oh, you could use anything. A potato could be a suppressor now. You know, I could just do this. It's going to be the competition's going to change the whole game, and 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 it almost seems like people stop doing it. But you're saying that that's not true. That's not accurate. No, no yeah. It, if you look at the form fours coming into the ATF, the, the numbers were relatively normal and steady. Uh, you know, 2018, we're back up to like 165,000. 2019, mm -hmm. almost 200,000 form fours. And it looks okay. like this year. Maybe so why did so many companies get out of the game? I saw there was a bunch of companies that were going to put out integral barrels and things like that. Or a lot of guys coming on board. Uh, big companies buying into to other suppressor manufacturers. Uh, some of that happened with uh, yeah. Tech. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, you know, I think I think there was a lot of there was a ton of optimism. There was mm -hmm. a ton of optimism that HPA was going to happen. Um, there was a ton of optimism that concealed carry reciprocity was going to happen. There was a ton of optimism that, that you know we were going to see these the the passage of a lot of pro gun pro gun legislation and you know based on events and things that occurred that that were out of our control like some of these high profile shootings. You know, they just didn't. They fizzled out. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of suppressors, yeah, integrals, uh, we did see a bunch of new integrals coming about, and that was kind of a, a nod towards what would happen if, if HPA occurred. Of course, I think what people maybe lost sight of, too, was that HPA didn't, you know, we, we heard a lot of people say, well, it's going to totally deregulate suppressors. And it's like, well, it's not. It's going to switch them from being an NFA item to being just essentially mm -hmm. a firearm. One yeah, firearm. yeah. So they're still going to have a serial number. You know, we'd hear people, oh, they're going to be cheap and disposable. Yeah. It's like, well, it's still Serial number. You don't take a take a worn out Ruger 1022 and throw it. So, in the trash so there wasn't. So maybe people just didn't understand what was going to happen. I, I see that Knox looks like he wants to jump in. Yeah, I think there's two things as well to point out with kind of the the folks that you know said, hey, well, I'm going to wait for the HBA to pass because things are going to be different. Mm -hmm. By and large, a the people that had already bought suppressors, like our our current market. Um, had bought everything that they wanted in that six month period between uh, the announcement of 41F and its implementation in early 2016. Um, I think that everyone else that kind of jumped on the, well, I'm just waiting for the HBA to pass bandwagon, specifically mm -hmm. after the election, mm -hmm. um, remember, had never bought a suppressor, right? Like they're mm -hmm. the same people that they say, oh, well, it takes too long, or I don't want to pay a $200, I don't want the ATF to be able to come to my house, which by the way, they can't. Um, they're, always going to have some form of an excuse. And that was the kind of excuse du jour, so to speak, mm -hmm. um, that was easy to, to pair it. And frankly, like, honestly, dealers, you kind of got to put some of it on them as well, right? Like these guys were used to not having to sell suppressors because they sold themselves. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden you have to shift and you're telling customers to wait. Like, I, I mean, I just don't see the, the thought process in that sales strategy. Um, I get the optimism with the Hearing Protection Act. Look, we were as optimistic as anybody. Mm -hmm. um, we do get false yeah. attribution. People yeah. saying, I'm not, by the way, I'm not trying to knock you guys. I think that would have sure. been so awesome. Like we were just saying, yeah. we all deserve that. <laughs> you know, yeah. we. it would have been great to make that happen. But something, so obviously there's what mechanically happened with all of these bills, right? And with the politicians, which is not on you guys, right? You're on the other side of that equation. You can't control what these politicians, uh, what, what they do necessarily. We can we could put pressure and try to convince them and nudge them in a direction. Ultimately, they do what they want to. It's just that this weird, like I remember, I, I don't know, Rich, do you remember this? I remember going to stores and they didn't have problems selling suppressors one day. And then all of a sudden they had problems. People weren't buying anything. Oh, yeah. Uh, I saw I saw like uh, a, 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 a 223 suppressor go down to 99 bucks. I bought one. For, yeah, and I can't awesome remember. Thing. Was it 41P when that was going on that just 
decimated the suppressor industry. Mm -hmm. I think I think it was 41P when that was, you know, getting yeah. ready to pass. After yeah. its implementation. Yeah. yeah that, was yeah. it after the implementation? Yeah. 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 Because once I remember it, people, oh, should I buy yeah. one? Should it? It's like, if you want one, buy one. Yeah, and I think that's what I think that's what one, Owen was saying, right? That's what you were saying, Owen. Yeah, leading, yeah, yeah. leading up to forty one F being implemented, that six month period when when you know they announced it to when it was implemented. I mean, you, you couldn't if it wasn't oh, nailed yeah. down. It was yeah, yeah it was gone. So did we get like a perfect storm on that? Did we get a perfect storm that you you had that you this didn't go through? And because uh, you know it's yeah. it just seems like something really crazy happened there, and people's I'm not saying you guys. I know when I was talking to people, what they were telling me was ridiculous. And I'm like, dude, I kind of do this for a living. Yeah. And I'm talking to these yeah, companies, were, <laughs> you know. Yeah, there. I mean, there were certainly people in there that were, were kind of, you know, playing, playing the odds of like, well, okay, it takes nine months to get a Form 4 approved. You know, especially right after the election. I mean, people are like, oh, man, if this thing passes, you know, quickly, like, why, you know, I'll wait. You know, it's like, oh, I could wait three months or I could wait nine months. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. You know, there, there were people playing those odds. But, man, if they had if they had just put the Form 4 in, they'd have their press for, you know, long before, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, that. but like to Knox's point, I bought my first suppressor before I was even in the industry. I bought my first suppressor in about 2000 or 2001 time frame. Mm -hmm. You know, 14 months was just the normal. That's what it took. And, yeah. you know, back then there were only 10,000 Form 4s going in every year. I mean, not very many at all. Mm -hmm. um, and it still took 14 months. And I've seen that roller coaster that, you know, as transfer times drop down more people like oh six months isn't so bad to wait months isn't so bad to wait and then they start buying and and so, mm -hmm. so people start buying and then the transfer times start creeping up because atfs get more and more and more and more forms yeah and mm -hmm. then you know pretty soon back up to nine or ten months even after they've added a bunch of examiners um and then you know sales taper off people are like ah 10 months 11 months 12 months 14 months that's too long to wait mm -hmm. and then they you know atf starts to catch up a little bit and it's just this constant seesaw yeah. um because all they can do is throw people at it uh yeah. you know we had that beautiful glorious e-form system for form fours for oh, a few months and you had to yeah. bring that up <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm sorry. I had to, I had to oh we're not yeah. opened on wednesdays wednesdays what yeah. the hell is that yeah, it's a special it's day for the government yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so you know I, I, I mean i remember in what it was probably like 07 or 08 when they moved nfa branch out of headquarters in dc yeah. over to now in west virginia i've got friends that got form fours approved in like 30 days mailbox to mailbox because they, mm -hmm. they had this these great examiners that, that were pushing through forms and getting them done um and then you know again people found out about it, like oh 30 days that's nothing and submit form fours and then they started getting backlogged so yeah. uh, you know i think the transfer it, it's all a perfect storm that you know the transfer times the paperwork the yeah you know, just so many things affect yeah affect it Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.